I'm gonna take you through my journey of how I learned for a fact that passion outweighs knowledge. I am the father of four amazing now adult daughters. And for them, and for every girl and woman who plays lacrosse in the future, I created the first ever certified girls lacrosse headgear. That's right, before I came along, only boys wore helmets. But this is not a story about lacrosse helmets. This is a story about how I knew nothing. I knew nothing about making a helmet. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an engineer. Far from it. But I knew what I was doing was the right thing. For every girl and woman who plays lacrosse in the future, passion fueled my mission. This mission started almost nine years ago on a lacrosse field in Homedale, New Jersey. I got to that field and I was excited. It was a new sport for me and a new sport for my girls. My girls always played sports and I was very fortunate enough to have coached them in basketball, soccer, softball, and other sports. But this was new and I pulled up and I didn't know anything. When I got to that field, the first thing I noticed was the boys were on one field wearing big hard helmets to protect their heads, while the girls were on another wearing nothing to protect their heads. I didn't understand it. I picked up the ball and stick, same rock hard ball, same stick, and I started asking questions, and I didn't like the answers, and I still don't. And I found two major studies which show girls lacrosse as the second highest concussion sport to only football. I started to read stories about how girls were impacted by one accidental blow to their bare head. My girls never played the game. They went back to playing other sports. In fact, they told me within a few weeks that they didn't like the sport anyway. But I was left with an option. Either do this, follow my passion and create it, or don't. I gave myself no choice but to be the person to do something about it. I've always had to overcome. Perseverance is nothing new to me. So the first thing I discovered was that there was a standard put in calling for soft headgear to work like a hard helmet. So I found something soft within six months and I knew would pass that soft test. It had to squeeze. And it would also pass a second test. So after six months, when I found something soft that I would, knew would pass those three tests, there was a third test, a cannon test, that rock hard ball shooting the headgear at close range at 60 miles an hour. So I found a lab in upstate New York that did that test. And guess what? We passed. It was amazing. It took us only six months to make headgear that worked. But I wanted it to look sleeker. I wanted it to be great for the girls. So I took another six months to create something that looked great and worked. And in the meantime, I got an email from that lab in upstate New York telling me that they were having troubles with their equipment. So I found the next closest lab in Ohio nine hours away, drove out to that lab, and I'll never forget sitting there. I took my position in the corner, hands over my head like I always did, I couldn't even watch. And when the score was read, the result meant that we failed miserably. And that was an accurate result. You see that lab up in upstate New York earlier gave us a false passing report. I was devastated. Ride home was miserable. I was at a crossroads again. But giving up was not an option. I knew that if I stuck with it, the rewards would be there. And so when it took me another two years to make the first ever certified girls lacrosse headgear, it was amazing. It was unbelievable. First, I finally had something that could protect these girls' heads in that sport. And second, the other rewards came. Fox News did a story right away. The New York Times, a full page article with a picture of my daughter wearing. Forbes Magazine, CBS, they all did stories. It was amazing. The rewards did come. This journey only solidified as I started to meet amazing girls and women around the country who had suffered. One was Taylor in Florida. Soon after I passed, I was given the opportunity to present the headgear at a big tournament in Florida. And I did under that tent early in the morning. And then after everybody ran out on their field, parents, coaches, players, some of them came up, thanked me, looked at the headgear, it was great. There was one girl left standing, and that was Taylor. And she came up to me and said, Mr. Stoker, can we talk? 
I said, of course, why don't we walk around and enjoy this beautiful day? And she said, I can't do that. You see, the sun makes my excruciating migraines that much worse. Taylor had been helicoptered off a of lacrosse field two years earlier on a board. We sat under that tent all day. She told me about her loneliness, her depression, how she's lost friends, how much her life has changed, had changed since that one single accidental stick hit her head. Taylor became my fuel. I just kept telling myself if I could save just one, that would be enough. Taylor instilled in me that everything I was doing was the right thing, that all the resilience I had was gonna be worth it. But I came home and there was another thing that I was doing. I was putting headgear into a sport that didn't have it before. And I knew that would be a challenge. I knew from sports like ice hockey, football, skiing, bike riding, that putting a helmet into a sport that didn't have it before would be a challenge. But I had no idea the level of resistance there would be from the top down. Soon after passing, I paid a lot of money for a big booth at LaxCon, the biggest lacrosse convention in, the, in lacrosse every year. And I went and I was really proud to show it off. And again, a lot of coaches and parents and players came up to thank me and liked what I did. But a few coaches, old school moronic mentality. One coach pointed at me and said, you are the problem. The fact that I created this headgear made me the problem to her. So I wrote a book. It took me a year and a half. I put all the girl stories, the science, the doctors who were on board to mandate headgear all in one book, and I launched it. And within two weeks, USA Lacrosse, the governing body of lacrosse, put out a press release condemning my book, Perseverance. I took that press release and I blasted it to my list of 12,000 coaches, athletic directors, and supporters around the country. And I said two things. I said, one, I stand 100% by everything in my book, and I still do. And two, I pointed to two outdated pieces of science that USA Lacrosse used in that press release. Within a few weeks, they removed that press release from their site. I know I've made a difference here. I know change is not, not easy to do. My girls never played the game but they paved the way for all girls and women to play the game in their future with their heads protected. I know it. The state of Florida mandated. Now every girl in Florida at the high school level plays the game with their heads protected. USA Lacrosse will mandate, and then every girl forever will play the sport of lacrosse with their heads protected. What are you gonna do? How many lives are you gonna impact? Remember, it's not about how much you know, it's about how much passion you put behind your mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.